Maimonides, as, as you've just said, is often recognized as the greatest rabbinic thinker, perhaps even of all time. There's a famous saying, from Moses to Moses, there's none like Moses. And he's known as a great rabbinic thinker for two reasons. One, he compiled the first and, to this day, the only absolutely comprehensive code of rabbinic law. It was the first such code that covered every possible topic, including required beliefs for the community, all right, through tort law and ritual law and family law and laws of, of purity and impurity, agriculture, through laws of the me messianic age, laws governing warfare, okay, and politics. The second thing for which he's well, for which he's absolutely distinguished, is that he wrote the Guide of the Perplexed, which is a very singular philosophical text, both in the way in which it's written and for its content. And that work has, in effect, set the agenda right for all future philosophy. On my interpretation of the Guide of the Perplexed, my Mandi's is offering us what he takes to be the distinctive philosophy of the Torah, of Judaism, of ancient Judaism, and that turns out to be a skeptical philosophy. By which I mean that it's not possible for a human being to have knowledge specifically about metaphysics, about God, about the heavens. He can have knowledge of physics, of the, what they call the, of nature, Okay? But he can't have knowledge of God and of the, um, and, uh, and of the heavens, of metaphysics. Okay? Um, instead, he tries to create for the individual a, a, a means of worshiping God through the individual's recognition of the limitations of his knowledge, after which the individual suspends, suspends judgment. He gives up the very drive, the anxiety, the, 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 the push to seek answers to questions which in fact are unanswerable. Um, and, and that allows both for a kind of peace of mind, he's freed from the anxiety of trying to find these answers he'll never get, and he is able, Maimonides attempts to shape a kind of worship of God, praise of God, awe of God, in light of the human's recognition of his own finite condition. That's all with respect to perfection of the individual. The law for Maimonides, which is what he's codifying in his legal works, his works of, in the Hebrew, it's halakha, um, is, a law, is, a, is a set of institutions, a set of laws, of practices, that are intended to create the best possible community. Okay? Not individual, it's not aimed at individuals, but at the best possible welfare of the community. And that includes both the political welfare, social welfare, economic welfare, but also the inculcation of correct beliefs and values. And so the two, the, and these correct beliefs and values turn out to be beliefs that everybody should hold, even though they're often not beliefs that we fully understand, of which we have knowledge in the sense in which the individual realizes that you can't have knowledge of metaphysics. And these practices are usually practices that concern individuals not in the heavens, but down here in this world, in this life. So there's really there, the two sides of his, of his interests, the law and philosophy, complement one another rather than contradict one another.